I hate that goddamn song so much. Welcome in. Ski to you all on this sad Friday night. Uh, welcome to the PHNX Diamondback Show. Of course, my name is Derek Montia, occasionally known as your mayor of this uh, network we call PHNX. Shout out to OG's Brands, the official sponsor of Flavoring Fridays. OG's is not your average cannabis-infused gummy. They absolutely knock it out of the park when it comes to flavor and their effects of their gummies are a total slam dunk too. That's a basketball term, but you get what we were going for here. Head on over to ogsbrands.com to see their full lineup, including their two newest gummies, and find out where you can purchase those. And we might need some OGs gummies on a night like this to overcome the Diamondbacks losing to the St. Louis Cardinals 9-6. to uh, There were some good moments for this team, but let's be honest. They were absolutely plagued once again by their... I guess, late inning shortcomings, both uh, offensively and in their bullpen. Uh, Diamondbacks had some good production from a few guys. Corbin Carroll was two for four with two singles tonight. Kevin Newman was two for three with an RBI and a run scored. Uh, Gino, of course, uh, did the thing again, his second home run of the year. He had three RBIs and was two for four. But really, Brandon Fott was not very good early in this game. That's what put the Diamondbacks in the hole. Uh, he allowed six runs and two homers in his first three innings of work. He just, he got hit hard tonight and he wasn't getting a lot of swings and misses uh, after his last outing when he set a career high, uh, I believe with 20 whiffs. Uh, so again, six runs allowed in those first three innings, just put the Diamondbacks behind. Uh, and it was just hard for them to come back from that kind of deficit, but they did. They did. Uh, yeah, they did. And yes, I am wearing the shirt, by the way. Uh, shout out to Elizabeth in the chat. Shout out to all of you. Ski, of course, to all of you. Uh, but uh, Elizabeth says, uh, Derek, the shirt. Yes, here it is. Uh, and of course, Thunderbolt, good to see you here. Uh, I'm, I am I have had it, though. Uh, I have kind of uh, had it a little bit with this team. I'm not... Uh, not I'm not digging what we see here. Like I and and we'll get into the late inning stuff. And of course, we will be joined by my vice mayor in your thunderstick, Jesse Friedman, here uh, from the clubhouse shortly. But uh, yeah, I mean, I I, I want to dig in on the the lack of offense in innings seven through nine. I want to talk about the bad bullpen, but. Brandon Fott was disappointing in this game. I mean, he did settle in nicely, and I think that's the thing about Brandon Fott is that he can rebound from rough outings pretty pretty well, like having a bad first inning like he did, giving up those three runs. Uh, some things were working for him. He got four whiffs on his sweeper, uh, two on his fastball, but he just he wasn't getting a lot of swings and misses. And I know the location uh, of his pitches were just absolutely problematic tonight. Uh, and of course, I, I don't know what to say about Fott because you just, you know, even within one game, you kind of get two different pitchers. Uh, his line ends up looking not terrible, but still not great. Six innings pitched, seven hits allowed, six earned runs, two walks, struck out four, gave up the two home runs. But uh, again, the Diamondbacks bailed him out essentially because that fifth inning it was just good old fashioned Diamondbacks chaos, right? You you had guys getting on. You had Blaze reaching on that error. You have Kevin Newman uh, bringing him home with an RBI double. Which, by the way, Newman. Let's put some respect on Kevin Newman's name. Uh, he he was not the problem tonight. Uh, the lack of offense, I think, around the board. Of course, you know there were some couple couple of hits that didn't go the Diamondbacks way once again. But that inning, that fifth inning, showed that the Diamondbacks are still. Uh, a very potent team offensively, even with this lineup out there that doesn't have their best uh, players as a part of it due to injury. But you have, you know, Cattell Marte getting the RBI single. Lourdes gets an RBI single. Uh, Christian Walker walks. Walker, 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 Walker. Uh, and then Gino with a first pitch three-run homer. Uh, that was an absolute blast to right field. 
like I said earlier, his second uh, of the season. The, the Diamondbacks managed to score six runs in the in- inning, tying the ball game at six. I believe that is when our producer, Damon Dog, walked in the door. I believe that's when he came in. I'm not sure if the home run happened because of him or just uh, was it was it due to your presence, Damon, or what was what what was your impact here on the uh, on the on this on this inning? You you really could say that it. I had a negative impact on the game as well because it was literally the second I walked through. Like I didn't really see the swing. I just saw the ball flying and then yeah. uh, every the light show and everybody going nuts. So I guess you could either say it was a positive thing or a negative thing, depending you were, on you were in the vicinity, right? Like you were there. It's just, you're e- yeah, you're either a glass half full or a glass half empty guy. At first, I mean, <laughs> I texted you guys and I was like, Hey, I'm a good luck charm. Yeah. But you know, a, yeah. after, the, after watching the rest of the game and it kind of going poorly, I, I kind of feel like maybe I was the bad guy, but I don't know. You, you, I mean, you've proven at times that you are a bad guy, but uh, you've also proven that uh, on the Cardinals show, sure. at least that, that you've grown as a person a little bit, or maybe sure. you haven't. I don't know. I don't know. I like I to think know. I have. I try, well, I try my best to be a good guy. It doesn't mean it always works out that way. So you being present, how frustrating it then is it to see the bullpen do what the bullpen has been doing lately and just not being able to go out there and have a clean inning, have an inning without allowing runs to score it seems like almost every time the bullpen is allowing runs and multiple runs at that i i don't i don't i feel like i'm just a broken man at this point this has happened so damn much this season like at what point is at what point do i just stop like like even like investing you know my believing my, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like i i did believe you got me again i'll be honest at six six i i, I believed all right i was sitting yeah. there at six six being like we're gonna win this ball game and yeah. then and then, of course, in classic 2024 D-backs fashion, we blow it in the last couple of innings. So <laughs> Classic, uh, yeah. Well, that, and you could say classic 2023 fashion as well because that's one thing that's problematic about this is it definitely feels a lot like last year. And, well, uh, I would say you know, that it, there was times where McGuff and Castro, and like there was a time where we had McGuff, Castro, Kyle Nelson in our, like early in the season, and they were okay. And then they got oh. really bad. And yeah. then and then we got seawalled and the whole bullpen got really good again. So I feel like we had stretches last year where they were good, horrific, really good. And then this year it's just been really 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 bad. They're it's just nothing so bad. in between. Nothing they're, they're, in between. They're either so good or so bad, but then certain guys like Scott McGuff are just infuriating because when the game isn't on the line, when the Diamondbacks have a lead and they need to go out there and just have them eat innings, lights out. No runs allowed. But when oh, they yeah. when the game is on the line, this Diamondbacks bullpen just can't hold water. I mean, in eight games, the Diamondbacks bullpen have allowed two or more earned runs, including tonight. Joe Mantiply remains absolutely game. inconsistent. You know, yeah, Joe. Man- I texted you guys this. You and Jesse. I said Joe Mantiply throws batting practice. He does. He throws it. I don't, like he I, he throws it in the middle of the zone, and he just lets every player just eat off of him. It's insane. Yeah. yeah. But Scott McGuff, I mean, he's kind of like, he's like, his tail to me is like the polar opposite of like Ryan Thompson with the Rays, right? Ryan Thompson, seemingly, as we analyzed, you know, his year with the Rays before he became a Diamondback last season, it didn't even seem like he had that much, that many bad outings. It kind of took two bad outings for him to have his kind of ERA blow up. And, and then shortly after that, he's DFA'd by the Rays. Meanwhile, Scott McGuff just continues to get opportunity after opportunity in high leverage situations. And despite how many times he blows it, the Diamondbacks continue to go to him as an option. And I and I think the reason why is they don't have a lot of options. Yeah, I I don't I I just I mean you're the Scott McGuff guy. Maybe you should be answering. I, for oh your yeah, plan. I don't I don't want to be I the Scott McGuff you. guy. Don't make me the Scott McGuff guy. That is not a place I want to be. His last four games, Damon, in four games. Oh, it's three and two thirds innings pitched. Uh, I don't even think that's right. I think it's two and two thirds innings pitch seven hits allowed six earned runs, two walks, two strikeouts. The man has an 8.10 ERA. And I don't know what to say. Like when, when you see the performance of Justin Martinez in, in triple a, and you see some of the other young guys, I, I just, I can't really understand 
when the Diamondbacks were so quick to move on from certain guys last season, why they don't have that same kind of attitude with guys that time after time seemingly can't perform. And I'm not, I, look, I'm not advocating for someone to like lose their job or whatever, but this is what sports and baseball is. If you can't come in there and do your job, I, I don't even know how you would expect to keep it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I don't think that that leash is too long, to be honest with you. We're still really early in the season to the point where I think, you know, Tory's the type of guy where he's going to let people work through those issues. Uh, but I, I, I can't imagine that that leash is too much longer. You can't just blow every single game. I told Jesse one week into the season, I'm ready for Justin Martinez and uh, Andrew Salfrank to get called up. Yeah, one, why not? One week there. Why not? It took me one week to be like, get these bums off my roster. But <laughs> well, okay, here we are. We know Blaze's, we know Blaze's struggles, right? But Tori today made me feel like a crazy person for even being dissatisfied with Blaze's performances because Tori approached it from the total Tory perspective on someone having the struggles that Blaze has, knowing that they are just that, knowing what we've talked about. It's kind of a yips thing. It's kind of like him being in his head, but like approaching it from the angle of like, we love blaze. We're going to show him love. We're going to keep giving him opportunities. We're going to let him work through this and grow as a player. They want blaze to become a well-rounded player and they know what he's capable of. These early struggles aren't really, you know, it's the, he doesn't have that track record in like the minor leagues and such, right? Like he's, he's been a great defensive player, especially with that arm of his, it's just the, the, the opportunities given to someone like, you know, McGuff in the bullpen over and over and over again, just kind of prove, I feel like that the Diamondbacks just are limited on options and especially options with experience right now. They know things are going to transform and the bullpen is going to be different as the year goes on, just like it was last year. They're going to get pieces back. They're going to possibly need to make one of the starters into a bullpen guy, but it sounds like based on an update we're about to give you here that they might need one of those guys for much longer than we thought that they were going to, which again, more bad news, more bad news. But before we get on to the bad news, I did want to talk about the Diamondbacks uh, late production uh, in, in late innings because holy crap, they have scored nine runs in 14 games in innings seven through nine, nine runs. That's it. That's ridiculous, really, when you think about it. And in some cases, the Diamondbacks didn't need to score more runs than that. And in other cases, the Diamondbacks absolutely had a lead that they blew because they couldn't score more runs. I don't know what the answer is. It's just absolutely crazy. But tonight, after that fifth inning, the Diamondbacks didn't have a a, a hit. They didn't put a man on base. They 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 did not do anything to back up that amazing comeback that they were able to muster up in the fifth inning. That was one of the most frustrating things about tonight. You could get mad about the bullpen. You could get mad about Brandon fought start, but it really did feel like the diamondbacks had the dog in them to keep fighting and to keep trying to bring, you know, this, you know, try to try to come back in this game. But man, it felt like once Mantiply allowed that one run, uh, to, to, you know, he allowed that triple to Brendan Donovan and then an RBI single to Goldie, who I spent the night be smirching on text messages to Damon and Jesse every time he did something. But that bad. was such a bullshit hit, too. That's it why really I, was. That's it why really I texted was. you and I was like, you need to apologize for that because correct because it was the most like karma bitch like type of hit <laughs> of all time. Like the dude literally just poked his bat out and it, and it just goes line drive into just, the grass. I was like, just texting Damon and Jesse. Is this your God in all caps for every time he struck out or did something bad? I so thought he was about to strike out again. Someone. And I was going to text you and be like, this guy stinks. <laughs> this guy stinks. Yeah. And then of course he, and then the next hit as well. I mean, I don't think they got anything out of it, but the next hit was like the weakest hit ball I've seen yeah. be a hit in my entire life. And it feels like the Diamondbacks have had that happen to them. Like, I don't yeah. know, five yeah. times a game this entire season. We like, talked about it with the Rockies too, yeah. right? Where like the balls were just falling, you know, everything falls fair Constantly. for them and everything goes foul for the Diamondbacks. It's hard to explain. Uh, by the way, Goldschmidt hitting 188 with a 554 <laughs> OPS. Just throwing that out there. Is this your God? I just needed to throw that out there. I, I, I Anytime I need to back up my stance on people not worshiping that man, I, I feel like I can. But, of course, we do have to give the King Snake to somebody. Probably should give it to Damon for going and watching this game as a fan. He probably deserves it. But instead, we're going to give it to Gino. Uh, Eugenio Suarez, two for four tonight with the home run, three RBI. 
uh, and just a guy that the Diamondbacks really need to catch fire. Again, it's it was great to see him early this season kind of spreading the ball around, uh, but this is his second home run, and Gino was kind of brought here to to bring the, the power to the Diamondbacks. That's one thing that they're definitely lacking. As of late, they've been able to get base runners on. They've been able to, you know, have that big inning like they did in the fifth, and a big part of that was because of Gino's home run, but it feels like that those home runs are, are pretty few and far between after – we saw them start the season on such a on such a good foot, on such a good note with their power, with their ability to produce runs. Uh, but we did we did get confirmation on a couple of other things tonight, by the way, including the Diamondbacks celebration that a lot of you have been asking about in regards to them doing a little motion across their mouth and throwing like the key away, like locking it up. Per Jody Jackson on the broadcast, she said she talked to Cattell and the celebration was started by Lourdes Gurriel Jr. Uh, and it's kind of a, a zip the lip, we stay quiet and let the other people do the talking, right? And I I, I think this kind of goes back to some of what we saw them doing with the Geraldo shushing in the playoffs last year and such. But uh, right now, you know, I, I get it. Uh, there's no reason to, it kind of goes along with the standard that they're trying to set and their attitude towards this season. But like, yeah, it's uh, it's it's one of those situations where I don't, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe maybe just do the talking, right? Like, I've 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 talked about it in the past a little bit, but I, I felt like this team was at its best when it had that edge. Tory kind of gives them that edge, but at times Tory's also like one of the most understanding, calmest, nicest people you can meet. So like, there that edge, that fire is more there in the playoffs when we see him giving those speeches in the clubhouse maybe than it is during the regular season. I, I don't know if Tommy Pham not being there kind of takes away that edge a little bit, but I, I don't know if zip the lip at times, like I get what they're doing. Like they're just trying to not do the talking and trying to let their production on the field do the, do the thing, but I get a little boastful, get a little arrogant. Like I feel like this team is always scared to do that last year with the home run celebrations, the minute that they invested, uh, you know, got, got themselves a new, you know, uh, like the, the, the vest or the snake, which we adopted as Jesse Jr. As most of you know, like they, uh, they kind of back away from it because I, I feel like the, like most of Twitter, they, they think that saying something online or saying something is going to actually impact the game. It doesn't, it's not how like karma really works. Don't listen to Damon. He'll convince you my text messages or why they lost tonight, but, uh, it's, it's the bullpen, the bullpen's why they lost tonight. Anyway, uh, we do have some positive updates and also maybe not some positive ones. Uh, I have this wonderful shirt on and hopefully tomorrow is a better day for us because it is Alec Thomas. Uh, I don't know what we, what are we calling this? The hype t-shirt, the home run t-shirt, the NLCS t-shirt. It's beautiful. It's amazing. Uh, and we got to talk to Alec Thomas today about not only the shirt, but if he thought that maybe shirts were better than bobbleheads, uh, and you know, the honor of being featured on a shirt like this. This is what uh, AT had to say. Uh, yeah, no, no part in the design. Um, I just saw it one day and I was like, oh, that's pretty sweet. So, um, yeah, I love the shirt. It looks, looks really good. It seems very much like your butt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think, um, I have a few shirts that that kind of have that little vibe to it. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, it, it means a lot. It means you did something right. And, uh, you know, coming big or coming out big in that moment and, uh, you know, the history of it and everything. And it was, it was pretty sweet. And now having a shirt and it being given away, you know, at, at the stadium is, you know, an honor. And, you know, I feel blessed to have that. How many times have you kind of relived that moment in your um, Almost every day, I would say. <laughs> uh, yeah, almost every day. But, uh, yeah, it was just a really special moment, and, you know, I, I love the swing. I love, you know, seeing all the fans get really excited and, you know, getting this place bumping. So, um, yeah, I definitely think about it quite often. Do you rather have a shirt or a bobblehead? Uh, I think a shirt. I think a shirt's a little cooler. Um, but obviously a bobblehead is, you know, really special too. So, um, yeah, I think, at least for me right now, I think a shirt's pretty sweet. Shirt is pretty sweet, right? Like bobbleheads are a bit more common. I don't know if you're getting a shirt like this made for you as a major league baseball player every single day. So uh, this shirt is is awesome. Uh, I don't know if you heard the questions that were asked, but the question what he when he was talking about if 
it, he was asked if he thinks about this moment and he said every single day and like that's like such a real answer because after being in a moment like that not only do you kind of relive it because of the amount of joy i imagine it brought you but i imagine it's also a motivating factor for thomas for him to want to experience a moment like that again like that's where the success becomes you know like an addiction where you want it again so bad you need to get back there right and so uh you know i i hope he gets that opportunity it'll be exciting to see him return to the field uh, and in fact we did also get an update in regards to his injury and how his progression at getting back to running and, and getting back to 100 percent is going this is what he had to say um in the beginning it was kind of hard um you know mentally i was kind of upset and you know battling with uh you know trying to stay positive and and uh talk to paul seawald a little bit and i think he's helped and also all the other guys that are there too so um obviously our, our training staff as well like talking to them so um the main thing i think is just the mental part of it and wanting to be out here and wanting wanting to be a part of the team and you know it sucks you know to be to be out for so long it feels like forever to me so um yeah it's it's been a process but i feel like right now i'm I'm in a good, you know, state, you know, uh, mentally and physically. So, um, you know, it's it's getting better each day, and um, definitely just trying to trust the process. Have you been able to start a running progression or anything like that? Yeah, um, we started a few days ago, and you know, it, it feels really good, and uh, definitely just building off that and um, taking it, you know, step by step, day by day, and um, you know, right now it feels really good. Have you been able to feel hit all that kind of stuff yet? Yeah, yeah. Um, not feeling just yet, but hitting uh, hit live at bats against uh, the guys that are still there, um, the expanded, extended uh, spring training guys, and um, got like seven, eight at bats the other day, and um, out in the field, and got to see them field my ball and, and not run. So um, that was a little weird, but it was it was still cool to just be able to see live pitching. And then also we have um, a traject machine here, and you know I get to see I've I faced all the all the starters that are throwing uh, here the next couple of days. So you know getting a chance to hit off that and um, you know stay ready you know and and making sure that I'm I, when I come back I'm you know not just hitting the ground running there so with Diamondbacks have a lot of injuries Alec Thomas again a big part of the offense that's missing and also his defense out there in the outfield as well but uh, of course can't get him back fast enough unfortunately we got some bad news uh, on Eduardo Rodriguez today, uh, we got an update. Tori said that they have shut Erod down once again due to him feeling some tightness again in his left lat. To uh, I guess to discuss that, I see this guy. He's cleaning off his camera right now, so I'm gonna whenever he's done doing that, I'm gonna bring him in. But Jesse Friedman joining us from Chase Field, Jesse. Uh, not exactly the news we were wanting to hear today when Tori told us that Erod is once again been shut down and his timetable is a question mark. We can't hear you, pal. <laughs> and I know you're going to fight with David about whose fault is this, but he's going to blame it on me again. He's going to blame it on you again. He's definitely going to do that. No, he's still not back. <laughs> Oh, you're lit up now. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, this is big, big muted Jesse. I'm going to, I'm going to, you move your mouth and I'll talk for you. Yeah. Hey everybody, it's Jesse from, uh, yeah, no, this is a good uh, work. You guys, yeah, uh, here, there we go. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's my lousy AirPods instead of the fancy mic. There you go. <laughs> that ironed out at some point, but uh yeah it it's it's tough news i mean we've talked for weeks now about how big it's going to be for the d-backs once you get eduardo rodriguez and jordan montgomery back just the impact that those two guys can have together and we still expect jordan montgomery uh to be back soon uh, theoretically is his debut with the diamondbacks would come a week from today that's certainly in and of itself is still a big boost but eduardo rodriguez i mean this is this is tough man um you know, it, it sounds like he just, sort, I guess, tried to get back too soon. Uh, I don't know exactly uh, exactly how this went down, but I believe Erod only took seven days off uh, from when he suffered the injury to when he started throwing again. And it, it sounds about right. Seven days. Well, yeah, I think it was the 19th to the 26th, if I'm not yeah. mistaken, of, of yeah. March. 
Um, and it appears that those seven days just weren't enough. And I don't know if this was avoidable in any sense. Uh, the Diamondbacks did do a follow-up MRI and they discovered uh, that Eduardo Rodriguez said Torrey didn't get into specifics, but he still said that there were signals in this MRI, whatever that yeah. means, um, that the yeah. injury is still present to, to some extent. So maybe, I mean, maybe it's on them for, you know, not sort of double checking that or being extra careful and making sure he was ready to go. Um, but, you know, sometimes these things just happen and there's, there's no way to, there's no way to know that something like this is, is going to come up until it does. Without, him telling you that there's a problem i don't know if you can know and one thing that we both kind of discussed here is that he was very confident that he was fine like even after the mri he felt like the mri was almost lying right and now here he is experiencing this tightness again uh i don't i have no idea what what a signal or an indicator is on an mri mri of a lat tightness but i imagine these people that are medical professionals know what they're doing. Uh, of course, we do have video here from Tori talking about Erod's injury and uh, what what's next for him. Um, Erod um, threw his bullpen a couple days ago and felt some um, some tightness, and um, we decided to pull back on on his progression. So, what does that mean? What is the timetable? I'm not sure. I don't know what that means right now. I just know that he spoke up, which we've asked our athletes to do. And he felt that that um, that tightness, and we're going to continue to progress um, as we we can. But for right now, we're going to pull back on his throwing program. So it's the same type of tightness from before, just coming back again a little bit. I don't think it was as sharp, um, but it was in the same area. Does pull back mean like shut down for a week or? Yes, we're going to pull back on his throwing program. Correct. Correct. So it's again the lat. Yeah. With the uh, sorry. Yeah, not great news. Um, my heart hurts for Erod, um, but this ball club is is ready to accept any challenge put before them. Um, they're a tough baseball team. They are resilient. They've had to make many adjustments and be very adaptable. Big words inside of our culture, and um, they've done a great job. They've done a great job. So it'll be next man up as as it's continued. Uh, to show up over the past, as it, as it has been for the past uh, several games, next man up, and these guys are getting after it. Jesse, I, I know that they probably don't want to admit this, even if it was the case, but how much do you think that them potentially seeing this as being an ongoing issue for Rodriguez is why they might have brought on Jordan Montgomery? Do you think that there's any any truth to that, despite the fact that they've already said no. Yeah, I'm I'm inclined to, to take them at their word, but I, I don't think it's a ridiculous question. I mean, but I, at the same time, I mean, according to what Tori said today, this this happened on Tuesday, like Erod threw a bullpen on Tuesday and he didn't have any issues. Apparently, or at least he didn't speak about anything uh, while he was throwing. It didn't come out until the next day where he revealed to the Diamondbacks coaches and training staff that he felt uh, just a little bit of tightness. So based on that information, I mean, that's information they got two days ago, right? So yeah. I'm inclined to think that what they said about the Montgomery deal being completely independent of Rodriguez's injury status, I'm inclined to, to think that that is, that is in fact the case, but it does underscore how important Jordan Montgomery is for the Diamondbacks at this point, because yeah. if, if you didn't have him coming back, in a week uh it i mean this would this would be tough like the d-backs have have gotten uh fairly far with, with zach gallon merrill kelly and then you know a bunch of question marks after that but the the narrative of this season was that they weren't supposed to have to do that anymore right right and right. uh and even with montgomery coming back you know you still have some questions here it obviously would be really nice if you had both of those guys back here in a few weeks well, especially with the inconsistency that you're getting, Brandon Fott wasn't great tonight. He did do a great job, and and I discussed how Brandon Fott does do this, right, where he can can have a disastrous inning, and because of his demeanor, he's able to bounce back and, and get things locked back in like he did tonight, but he put the Diamondbacks in such a hole early that it made it hard for them to come back. They did, yet you have the bullpen and the late inning and their inability to score runs late that just comes back all of that late inning stuff the bullpen the 
nine runs in 14 games and inning seven through nine, like all of that. The team didn't get a hit after that big fifth inning. And I think that to me is almost as disappointing, if not more so maybe than the bullpen. I kind of expect the bullpen to do what they've did tonight, even though it sucks. It's like you, when I texted you the thing about, you know, that game and you were like eight runs isn't enough. You feel that (laughs) against the bullpen uh, or for when the bullpen is, is going out there to perform sometimes. It's just the fact that they couldn't get the offense rolling once they did have that big inning is, is what their offense has kind of been this year. Yeah, there's there's some truth to that for sure. Uh, I guess this time the beginning happened in the fifth instead of the first, right? So right. that was that was different. Right. But yeah, it was it was a rough go against Steven Matz. The backs weren't weren't making him work a whole lot. They were kind of just scattering hits around here and there. And then uh, they, you know, Blaze Alexander reaches on an air, and instead of nobody on two outs you've got a runner at first and one out the d-backs took off from there and managed to put up six runs uh i timed it it happened in 13 minutes the diamondbacks went from down six nothing to a a tie game six to six which is remarkable and yet as you said the the bullpen came in and and the bullpen did what we've seen this bullpen do quite a bit here in the early going in close games they've been they've been pretty good in the mop-up situations but they've struggled in the situations where it really matters most uh three innings from d-backs relievers tonight total seven hits three runs that's just not that's just not gonna not gonna do it and the cardinals are a team that actually does have uh, a pretty good bullpen and and uh, they did yeah. still. D-backs still, you know, did some damage against uh, against Giovanni Gallegos. He's the one who who gave up the home run to Suarez. But after that, it was just lights out from from the Cardinals. Well, speaking of injuries and bullpen, uh, do you have a update on Paul Seawald and when we might see him making some progression towards coming back? Yeah, Seawald. Uh, uh, Tori said today that Seawald is scheduled to throw a bullpen tomorrow. Uh, so that'd be Saturday. So that's a that's a big development. Uh, I mean, getting on a mound and actually, you know, throwing real pitches and whatnot like that's a that's a really big step in his progression. Tori did say that he he would like to believe that that Seawald will uh, do a rehab assignment before rejoining the Diamondbacks. And it's not like that rehab assignment would start on Sunday. Uh, he's gonna. He's probably gonna do multiple bullpens. He'll probably do multiple live, sure. um, you know, facing hitters. Do multiple live sessions after that as well. So you're still a ways out from Seawald returning. I don't want to make it sound like he's throwing a bullpen and he'll be back with the team next week. But yeah, that's it's a positive sign. I mean, we were looking at a two month window at, at the beginning of this with Seawald. That's what Tyler Glass now had you know, a grade two uh, oblique injury at the beginning of last year when he was with the Rays and he missed two months right on the dot. So that was kind of the baseline here. I think there's a pretty good chance that Seawald could be back well before then. And he's also a reliever, so he doesn't have to build up the amount that like a starting pitcher would. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a huge factor for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, you factor in like a couple of bullpens, a couple of live sessions, you know, a few appearances uh, down in Reno you know, maybe, maybe three weeks. Like I'm just kind of taking a stab in the dark here, but I, I think that that's maybe the earliest that, that I could imagine Seawald being with the D-backs. And uh, maybe that, maybe that happens, maybe it doesn't, but even if it's four weeks, even if it's five weeks, I mean, that's still quite a bit earlier than we kind of expected at the beginning. Well, if you're here right now on the PHN Exports YouTube channel, we thank you so much for your time. And we are sorry that the Diamondbacks did this to all of us tonight. Of course, <laughs> uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Uh, drop us a like. We always appreciate when you do that. Uh, make sure you sign up for notifications. That way you don't miss when any of our wonderful shows go live. If you're listening on the audio podcasting side, subscribe over there. Leave us a review. We always appreciate that feedback and those five-star reviews. Uh, do wonders for a little podcast like ours. Of course, also check out Prize Picks. Prize Picks can make baseball so much more fun. Uh, and they have something for every sports fan. Again, this blew Jesse's mind, but from baseball to basketball to League of Legends and everything in between. So uh, you can pick LeBron, you can pick Shohei, you can pick Connor McDavid, David, or you could pick Jude Bellingham, all in the same entry. So make sure check out Prize Picks right now. Uh, of course. Uh, right now, you can Eric, get down. Do you, have, just, do you have any idea who Jude Bellingham is? Uh, of course, I'm a I'm a huge Jude Bellingham guy. You know, well, that yeah. Thing. I just wanted to I just wanted to ask and make sure. I just I I know that you you're a massive Jude Bellingham Big fan. Don't don't make me put on his jersey. 
I don't know. Maybe he doesn't have a jersey. Anyway, prize picks is really simple to play. You can make all your picks and submit their uh, your entry in less than 60 seconds. Uh, you can test your skills on pri- pe- prize picks this season. It is the most exciting way to play dan- uh, daily fantasy sports. So get down on it right now. Go to prizepicks.com slash PHNX and use code PHNX for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash PHNX and use code PHNX. Pick more pick less it's that easy that's all you gotta do pick more or pick less that's all you do all right uh also once you get once you get that wonderful money from prizepicks.com you can go open yourself a checking account with our friends at desert financial credit union for more than 84 years desert financial has been arizona's largest most trusted local credit union they got me started on my home ownership journey this little uh, cave that i'm in right now and they can get you started as well the D- desert financial team are financial experts who are committed to their members and the community offering financial solutions tailored to helping real people achieve their financial goals and dreams so join a credit union that is committed to giving back to the community and sharing success with its members when you open a free checking account online right now you can get 200 dollars in bonuses get started by visiting desertfinancial.com 200 today uh, and let's take a look at the count from this game because uh, numbers, the numbers are the numbers. And uh, well, this is numbers don't lie. That's different. Let's do the count. I mean, we can do numbers don't lie. Damon no, wants we'll do the do count. numbers don't lie. He wants, he wants to go right to the numbers don't lie. Uh, mm-hmm. Cardinals out hit the Diamondbacks. At one point, the Diamondbacks actually, when when the fifth inning was around, they had actually out hit uh, yeah. the, the St. Louis Cardinals. But that's when they just stopped hitting uh, and decided to not. Uh, hit any longer diamondbacks uh actually had uh, more opportunities with runners in scoring position they went three for nine uh cardinals went three for six two home runs by the cardinals which really were the big difference because that drove in those runs early to the one home run by the diamondbacks and two errors there on the cardinal side to uh flawless baseball from the diamondbacks i guess you could say we didn't have any big defensive gaffes tonight that really seemed to cost this team it was just the way the bats kind of went cold well, there there were, yeah, I guess not defensive gaffes necessarily, but there was a base running gaffe with Kevin Newman getting there doubled absolutely off base, was. <laughs> uh, on a Lourdes Gurriel Jr. Ugh. liner into the gap. And to be fair, it was a really nice play by uh, by Jordan Walker in right field, a sliding catch. But at the same time, I mean, Kevin Newman was past third base. I think he just uh, he just took a, a very unnecessary risk with the Diamondbacks down six runs at that point. And uh, that resulted in the inning being over. The D-backs also, they they didn't make any errors in this game. But the Brendan and Donovan triple, uh, the kick started the uh, the Cardinals uh, taking the lead back after the Diamondbacks had had tied this one up. We did talk about that with Torrey Lovello after the game a little bit. And uh, he was not... uh, he, he seemed to think that it was misplayed off the wall, uh, which I believe was Corbin Carroll, who was who was there first. And it might have like even bounced off his glove. And then Lourdes Gurriel wound it up, wound up uh, fielding it, which in some sense is maybe not the worst thing for the Diamondbacks because Lourdes does have a better arm than Corbin Carroll. So as long as it doesn't take like a whole a whole bunch of time to get the ball to Lourdes, uh, that's maybe not terrible. But uh, the relay wasn't particularly good uh, from that point. Kevin Newman uh, really bounced the throw over to third base, maybe with with better execution there. You're able to, to get Donovan at third. And, you know, who knows what happens from from that point? The Diamondbacks maybe use uh, some of their some of their better relievers. Maybe you see Ryan Thompson, maybe you see Kevin Ginkle yeah. in this game if, uh, yeah. if the game stays tied. So that was uh, that was, a you know, not not as nearly as terrible of a defensive mistake as we've seen from the D-backs at, at times in the early going. But uh, a play that Tori Lavella would have liked to see executed better. Well, and you, we, we talked about Brandon fought a little while ago, but you were not here yet for that. And obviously, like I said, fought was able to get dialed back in, but what was really, what was really off about Brandon fought tonight, especially after coming off of one of his best starts of his career. Uh, can we can we pull up the the pitch chart uh fots uh fots fastballs i think we think we have that hey there it is uh so these are uh these are brandon fots fastballs in this game uh the red ones are four seamers the orange ones are sinkers and mm-hmm. to answer your question derek at least in my opinion there's just way too many pitches in the middle here and yeah. granted the cardinals did have Maybe some decent bad ball luck at the beginning of the game. Like, you know, Brandon Donovan's single to to start this one was a roller up the middle at like 80 something off the bat or whatever. But at the end of the day, I don't I don't think Brandon fought 
was getting like outrageously unlucky because he was throwing just too many pitches in the middle of the strike zone. And in my mind, that was that was just the the biggest issue for him today. Well, I am uh, I'm I, I have no disagreement here, uh, and I just. Like, again, that's that's where we talked about what version of Brandon fought are we going to see at times? And I don't I don't know what 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 causes this necessarily. I don't know what to say about that. I mean, obviously, a lot of pitchers have nights like this where they're just catching too much of the plate. But it, it does feel like when Brandon fought is off, that's exactly what he does. Like, it's just, you know, fastballs essentially are just middle middle and entirely too much. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about it like his fastball is not an elite level pitch. Like if he throws his fastball in bad spots, it does get hit. Someone like Zach Gallon can get away with stuff like that a little more because his fastball is so much life. Uh, Fott doesn't have that life. And he also, um, his velo has been a little bit down in, in the early going. I think he averaged 92.4 with his four seamer uh, in this star, which is a, just about a tick down from where it was last year it's still early nothing i'm super concerned about or anything at this point but yeah all that to say if fought leaves his fastball in bad spots it 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 does get hit and uh his his fastball command was not as good today as we've seen it in his previous outings his pitch selection seemed kind of limited like you said anyway he throws that sinker in the fastball but that's like his they're they're both essentially fastballs sweeper was the yeah. only thing else he was really throwing he threw a change up about 10 percent of the time but that I mean, it, it really, like you said, when when his fastball isn't good, and and he's relying on it that much, then you know, I, I don't know. I, I feel like we at times see a little bit better of a a pick, pitch mix from Brandon than this. Uh, but again, I'm still encouraged by his ability, even though he did give up those six runs early, to come back and still give the Diamondbacks six innings and at least give them a chance yeah. to stay in this game. Hundred percent. Tori Lavello was very complimentary of Brandon fought, even though he, he did acknowledge that it was a rough start and, and he did give some, some reasons for why that was, but yeah, he also spoke highly of, of Brandon fought's ability to grind through and, and get the diamondbacks, you know, uh, in, into the sixth inning and, and able to finish the sixth inning after they get 31 pitches in the first. So it was, it was a really rough start for Brandon fought and he did bounce back. Well, uh, he gave the diamondbacks a chance to, to win this game. He did not take a loss, uh, when, when all was said and done. And at, at the end of the day, like he, Brandon fought didn't pitch well today, but I wouldn't say I'm all that concerned about him. I still think that he's pitched a lot better than his ERA would, would tell you. And, in the in the long run, I still think he's going to be a pretty good pitcher, and I, I don't think he's going to have an ERA of seven point six or whatever it is right now. The yeah. rest of the way, it just feels like the Diamondbacks need him now more than we thought they were going to. Obviously, we don't know yes. what Jordan Montgomery is, is going to do uh, or or how quickly he's going to be able to get in in gear for his season in regards to ramping up and being ready. You know, obviously the Diamondbacks are shooting for that April nineteenth date. Tori confirmed that once again, but he still didn't seem like a hundred percent. He he asked us, he was like, what did he say? He said, April 19th. Yeah, that sounds good. Around, yeah. <laughs> you know, so there's still no confirmed date for, for Jordan Montgomery, uh, Monty, as we lovingly call him already that Tori didn't know, uh, for, for him to join this team. But like, even with Montgomery, with the fact that we don't know when Erod is going to be part of the starting rotation, they are going to need Brandon fought more, you know, than him essentially being kind of like a fifth starter in the rotation, right? Like that's, yeah. I think that's the thing that's a concern here is, is that they, they can't, they, they kind of need that, that consistent version of Brandon fought. They need big game Brandon uh, to, to kind of maybe not being at, at the same level as that gallon and Merrill, but at least being a little bit close to what those guys closer to what those guys are doing. And I, I don't have, I'm like you, I don't have concerns about him. I know what he's still capable of. And I think again, he still came off of one of his best outings of his career in his last outing. And this one kind of, a, I mean, he still a, gave up, he still gave up five know, runs against the I Braves. Know, yeah, I just fair, but, but I'm with you, Derek, yeah. 20, 20 yeah. whiffs to me. Like, I don't even care how many runs he gave I, up. I don't like, either. 20 whiffs I, cool. <laughs> I don't either. It just, it shows he's going in the right direction and hopefully he can put all of that together, you know, especially with the way that he, you know, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's not often that you see a young pitcher kind of get stronger as the game goes on, they get shelled. They get to a point that their confidence is rocked and you could tell that they're not going to be effective anymore. Brandon fought, did not do that. Like he, you came out, you got punched in the mouth 
and you know he 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 locked it in not immediately but he still was <laughs> able to give the the Diamondbacks six innings tonight but uh, we do have the numbers of course that we just talked about but we also have another number that doesn't lie because as you know numbers don't lie uh jesse hit us with your number tonight yeah tonight's number is 6.57 uh yeah there it is uh 6.57 derek is the starting pitching era for the diamondbacks for pitchers not named zach gallon or merrill kelly this is, uh, we kind of touched on this earlier this is this was a big narrative coming into the season that you weren't just going to have Gallon and Merrill. You were going to have a complete rotation behind them. And if you want to know why the D-backs are 6-8 and eight so far, a pretty big reason is that it's been like it was last year pretty much, right? I mean, 6.57, that's basically the combined ERA that you got from Zach Davies and Madison Bumgarner and you know all of the other guys that the D-backs were cycling through in the rotation throughout the year. So in that regard, this team has been maybe even worse than last year. And, and like you were saying, like, I, I think fought actually, uh, he, I think he pitched better than, than his final numbers maybe today. I mean, not, not by a whole lot. This was not a good outing for him, but I do think he's been better than his numbers this season as a whole. And I still think that he's going to be fine when all is said and done uh, the, the rest of the way. So I expect this to get better, but six, five, seven is, is obviously brutal. I mean, that's Tommy Henry, Ryan Nelson and Brandon fought. None of those guys have in, in just pure production wise. None of those guys have been good to this point. Uh, Nate Cleveland says, I want a new number, Jesse. Uh, sorry. He's rejecting that one. And I think I kind of <laughs> do too. I'm not, not I have lie. a couple of others that I, that I considered, <laughs> uh, one of them, one of them was zero, which is the number of hits that the diamondbacks got after the <sighs> sixth run fifth inning, which you mentioned yeah. earlier. Um, and then the other one was 13, which I already mentioned. That's how long it took for the diamondbacks to go from down six, nothing to a, uh, to a tie game, uh, six, six in the, in the fifth inning. So, I like that one. Yeah. That one, that one was a little bit better. I like that one. So, <laughs> uh, of course I also like our diehards. I like all of you. You're all great. Thank all of you guys for being here live right now. Uh, but of course, if you are a diehard, thank you extra. Thank you a little bit more uh, for being a diehard. And if you're not one, consider joining us. You get all sorts of wonderful benefits, including a free T-shirt from the phnxlocker.com. Not to mention all of Jesse's content, all of my content, all the stuff we do in the Discord, all of the discounts with our partners and our events, like our upcoming uh, game against the Padres, our takeover at Chase Field, which is on May 4th. Uh, thank you to everybody shaming me in the chat yesterday for getting the date wrong. I pretty sure i wrote the date wrong so it's me hi i'm the problem it's me but it's on may 4th the same night as the gabriel moreno bobblehead night so make sure to become a diehard you'll get that discount on that event and all of our events uh we're having some fun over here uh so join us become part of the family also like i said a great night to try out og's brands whether you just want a happy balance whether you want to maybe get a good night's sleep after a game like that or just enjoying yourself and having a wonderful friday night og's is the way to do so they launched their two new products that we've been talking about their live rosin rick simpson oil they got og's naturals they got big og's go out there right now og's naturals are vegan gummies made with the live rosin meanwhile the big og's uh, mega version of pigs uh, raspberry orange rso that's that rick simpson oil that i am a big fan of uh so check those out to learn more about og's gummies and where you can find them head on over to ogsbrands.com if you want to be like Ga damon Get some OGs, of course. But if you want to be like Damon uh, and go to the game tonight, make sure to check out Game Time. It's the place for last-minute ticket deals. So when you're just sitting around the office editing our shorts and you decide that you want to go out and actually watch the baseball game that you're watching on TV that's two blocks away from you, check out Game Time. It's the place for last-minute ticket deals. You can save up to 60% off of buying last-minute for sports, concerts, events, and so much more. It's the fastest-growing ticketing app in the country for a reason, and you can take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. For a limited time right now, all users can get $20 off any MLB purchase of $150 or more in the Game Time app. With code first pitch, terms do apply. That's code first pitch, F I R S T P I T C H, all one word, for $20 off from now until April 14th. So, not a lot of time to get that, but download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Go to a game this weekend. Go to the Diamondbacks, get this awesome shirt uh, for the Alec, Alec Thomas shirt, uh, and join us. Uh, have a good time. With the there. $20 off I saved at Game Time, I bought two value hot dogs. Oh, two value beers yeah and that was Damon, Damon likes to text me 
because I sent out a, a, an innocent tweet one time, basically saying we can't have both Jordan Montgomery and value beers. And every time Damon finds a value beer in the stadium, he has to rub <laughs> it in my face. He has to, he has to, he has to like, like one up me or so. I don't know. I didn't say I didn't want value beers. I just went by the value beer stand and it was gone. They took the sign down. It's not over there anymore. I think the people that you're getting your beers from at that stand are doing it falsely. I think you're getting $5 beers that you don't actually deserve that shouldn't be value beers, but you somehow talk them into this. I have no way to prove otherwise, but I'm two uh, for two, Derek. I'm two for two. See, go you're going to keep playing. Beers, I'm gonna I guess. Be... He said he got an IPA as a value beer. Oh, yeah. That makes me even more oh, skeptical. Oh, yeah. Hot Valley IPA on, on I tap. I don't believe that. That's Damn right. Wild. Five bucks. Five bucks Man, a pop. Draft that is, beer, baby. That's Derek a great is... way to spend the $20, though, that you save from game time. So I'm, I'm going to be, dude, I'm going to be 10 for 10, and Derek's going to be telling me about how it's bullshit, and you. there's no Just way get that, here. Get him my, out of here. that I got the value beer. Get beers, yourself right? out of here. But, of course, uh, we do have some videos from the clubhouse, including Tori's uh, post game. Uh, I guess opening up post game. Is that what we have here? Can you yeah, get down six nothing. Um, you, you're always looking for um, a response. The team did a great job. We just kept chipping away, and clearly the big the big blow was was uh, Geno's through and home run that got us right back in the game. Um, you know, Brandon fought was his first first couple innings were were a little bit wobbly, but. If you were to tell me after 31 pitches in the first inning who's going to pitch through the six and give up six runs and have a chance to win the baseball game, I, I, I would have, I wouldn't have believed it. So credit to him for being able to stable himself, right the ship, and and do what he did and um, kind of set us up. You know, we had we had some good matchups we felt like, and then uh, it just just fell apart. And they had some big hits at the right time, and um, we couldn't we couldn't cash in on the back end of that, but. Um, uh, look, we fought. and We did everything we could to win this game. We got back in it. Just didn't happen. So just got to turn the page and be ready to go tomorrow. You can tell he's a bit heartbroken there, but I also like what he said about Brandon Fott because I think we could all agree with that. With the way that this game started out, to find out that Brandon lasted six innings is a bit of a, a surprise, and you kind of feel like, yeah, that's that that's that's a win in a small way. Yeah, absolutely. And on that note, here is what Brandon Fott had to say about uh, about his outing tonight. We start off slow. Um, I think in those situations as starting pitcher, you're just trying to, at that point, go deeper in the game for the bullpen and set it up for tomorrow. And um, that was certainly my plan once I gave up six runs and, and three innings. And um, so I'm happy with that, but I'm definitely not happy with, with giving up six runs either. So um there's good and there's bad. Was it a location issue? Yeah, I think early on, just one locating, especially to new bar, uh, missed on the complete other side of the plate, and um, I take responsibility for that, and um, that that shouldn't happen. It's wild because whenever they say certain things after the game, there is part of me that does say, "Oh yeah, they are human," like throwing a ball into a very small area and sometimes <laughs> things don't work out because that's very difficult to do at the elite level that major league baseball players have to do it. Right. Yeah, that's uh, that's fair. Um, they are. I, I have to remind myself that they're human all the time, Derek, because I spend I spend too much time on baseball savant. That you know, <laughs> get down, down in they're the not a, a spreadsheet, Jesse. Uh, <laughs> they have a heart and a soul. <laughs> Uh, other a couple of other interesting things post game. Uh, Tori talked about Goldie, of course, is his former his former player coming through with that single in the yeah, seventh Damon inning that ultimately put that the lot, by the way <laughs> that ultimately put the Cardinals up in this game. Uh, Tori was asked about the swing itself. Uh, you guys may remember there was a oh, yeah. I think it was a change up from Joe Man's apply that was well below the strike Way zone. Below pretty, the zone. Pretty um, a pretty impressive uh, piece of hitting. From Goldie, so Tori talks about that here, as well as the possibility of maybe putting Goldschmidt on uh, with first base open in that situation. Um, I, I gotta live with that, right? If the the, the the common sense move is to walk him, um, then you gotta really put yourself in a position to turn to. Ball's gonna probably be put on the ground, or maybe strike out the next batter left on left. So, 
we talked about it. It was the same thing um, that happened. I think it was in Atlanta. We talked about expanding the zone, and and Paul's too smart of a hitter. He just he knew he knew he wasn't going to get a strike, and he just reached out there and hit a change up off the ground. It was a ball out of hand, um, but he beat us. He's a smart hitter, and I've seen him do it a long for a long time. But um, yeah, you see the result, and you start thinking, well, should I should have walked him, but we didn't, and got clipped. Okay. All right. What, what Sorry, there's there's a, there's a little bit of chaos uh, over here, Derek, because Steve Gilbert uh, just opened the the door of the <laughs> the booth that I'm in and threatened to make a surprise appearance on the PhD no, post game no. show. He's and I told him he should, show. and then he yeah. ran away because yeah, he no, he's a, forbidden from this show. He knows I, that he's not allowed so. on this show. Yeah, uh, but so. yes, Goldie Goldie was because I texted it to you. Goldie was hitting 174 before that at bat. So. I don't hate the idea of pitching around him, but I also don't really feel like you had to be have to be super threatened there. And yet Goldie does what Goldie does, especially in Chase Field, is he he finds a way to get the big hit. And uh yeah, like that run, everything else after that didn't matter because the Diamondbacks offense went completely flat and they weren't able to up, muster up more than that. But like we could really get into the Scott McGuff stuff, but that that run allowed by Mantiply was enough. Yeah, Tori was faced with a really similar situation with Aaron Judge uh, in, in the finale of the Yankees series where he had first base open, Anthony Rizzo on deck. Of course, the question, do you put Judge on and, and go after Rizzo? Judge wound up uh, getting a, a very big hit, and the Yankees won uh, in large part because of that. And Tori was very open after the fact that he regretted uh, that move. This one, I think, was maybe a little bit a little bit less black and white, but... Sure. At the same sure. time, uh, Paul Goldschmidt, despite the numbers that you mentioned, is a very, very good baseball player and a very good hitter. And against a lefty, that is a really good matchup for him. Like nobody, I don't have numbers in front of me, but Paul Goldschmidt over the last like four or five seasons has hit lefties basically as well as anyone in all of baseball. So you knew that this was going to be a pretty good matchup for him. And, uh, you know, he came he came through in a really big spot. Tori has limited options when it comes to his bullpen and so he has the guys we know that he trusts like you said maybe his selection in the bullpen goes differently if the diamondbacks are able to secure a lead perhaps there in in the fifth inning at that point who knows how he manages this game differently but he doesn't really have much of an option other than right now to put his faith in some of these guys that fans and even us at times are questioning him putting his faith in the reality right now, Derek, is that the D backs have three right handed relievers in their bullpen that they just they just have not proven trustworthy in the in the early going of the season. Right. Scott McGuff, Luis Frias, Miguel Castro. All of those guys have been really rough, especially in big moments early on in the season. And it's tough. I mean, when when you've got I mean, that's you, you've got Kevin Ginkle, of course, at the end, you're going to save him for for save situations. Most of the time, Ryan Thompson has obviously been very, very good. But Tori is going to probably use him when the D-backs have a lead, uh, you know, or at least if, if the game is tied, you you need guys, you need other guys to be able to step up in, in games like this where you're maybe just down a run. Right. Like it's still right. a baseball game. You still have a chance to win. And yet the Diamondbacks, I mean, these guys have just have just really struggled so far. So Torrey was also the last thing from uh, from Torrey after the game. He was also asked about his relievers and just the need to kind of continue believing in them regardless of the results so far. I got to believe him. I got him, yeah. Um, I'm not. I, I can't protect him. They got to pitch better, but I believe in them. They got. They're gonna get the baseball, and they got to. They're gonna get the opportunity. So I'm gonna keep keep finding my my way to them, and, and I'm not gonna run from people. If any human being ever said that they had to believe in me the way that he just said it, <laughs> I don't know if I'd ever believe in myself again. But hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully they can find some confidence somewhere. Did you see that pause? That pause, Damon, my God. He sat that there was for a damning five, pause. He sat there for five seconds just <laughs> staring off into the ether. I, I think I think to be fair, if you like if you were in the room as I was, it didn't it didn't come across quite how you might be interpreting it. It was more just uh the the way that the question was asked was like, you know, you you have to you 
you still believe in these guys, huh? Like something sort of along those lines. And he yeah. was like, I have yeah. to believe in him. You know, it was kind yeah. of like a yes, like I, I do have to believe in these guys. So uh, I don't think that was a, a slight to them or anything. But yeah, it's just the reality of the the cards that Tory has been dealt. It's a combination of Paul Sewald being out, which again, I cannot stress enough how much the Diamondbacks feel that even in games like this where, um, you know, where you, you didn't necessarily, you weren't in a situation to use Seawald necessarily, but the fact that his absence puts Ginkle in that role and then Thompson kind of gets slid into, into the more positive role where you're, you're only going to want to use him when you have a lead to protect the D-backs really need some of these other guys to, to come through and, you know, Jordan Schusterman said it on the show yesterday, and we've talked about it a decent amount over the offseason. The D-backs, for everything they did over the offseason, all of the boxes that they checked, they didn't add really anything of note to the bullpen, and we're seeing the impact of that. And the bigger story here in regards to that is that Erod is farther away further away than we think he is or than we thought he was coming into today, right? So that impacts the the bullpen and how pieces potentially from the starting rotation right now, like Ryan Nelson, let's just say his name, could factor yeah. in to contributing to the bullpen, right? The longer that they need both Tommy Henry and Ryan Nelson, and not to mention the fact that they most likely aren't going to convert both of those guys to bullpen arms. They would choose one, and then I imagine if they didn't need the other one in the starting rotation, they would keep them stretched out for depth in the minor leagues, right, in, in Reno. But, I mean, right now, we have no clue when that's even going to happen or if that's even going to happen, right? Like, right now, I, I have to say that Tommy Henry and Ryan Nelson's value is pretty high to this team considering how much they need them when it appeared at one point like they kind of – had changed direction from either of these guys being part of the starting rotation. So I, yeah. I just, it's, it, it's not completely understandable. It's not completely justifiable that they didn't address their bullpen, but I, I do have a feeling that at least internally and, and not making it known to us, like, this is just me again. This is, this is uh, <laughs> me just I, I, hypothetically speaking, but I feel like, you know, they, they thought that maybe they can move some pieces around and, you know, everything's going to be fine. And then it's kind of a worst case scenario. They, they, they lose Erod for an undetermined amount of time. They lose Paul Seawald for an undetermined amount of time. And suddenly all of those options that they thought that they might have in the bullpen dried up pretty quickly. Yeah. It, it's not to say that the D-backs bullpen couldn't be all right. Eventually. I mean, we saw this last year where it was such a mess early in the season. And then by the second half, it was, it was fantastic. All of a sudden, the D-backs can add at the trade deadline if they're in position to do so. I think it seems pretty inevitable that if they're in position, uh, if they're in, in you know, a they have spot to be in position. Yeah, they have to be in contention exactly. for that. Yeah. Exactly. They have to find a way to stay afloat, not just until the trade deadline, but also until Paul Seawald returns. And even if Seawald is back in three or four weeks, like, Diamondbacks have only won a single baseball game so far, Derek, against a team that was not the Colorado Rockies. And I, I don't want to like go too far down that road because these have been largely very competitive games. They've they've like let tonight. several of them. Yeah, they've let several of them slip away. It's not like they're getting blown out by these teams. But I mean, that that Seawald is such a big part of your ability to win those 50 50 kind of games. And you've got to find a way to stay afloat between now and, and when he gets back, when you're finally, you know, have the makings again of what was a very good bullpen down the stretch last year. The dangerous side to this could be the fact that because everything worked out for them last year, they think everything's going to work out for them this year. And with the additions they've added and everything that it's inevitable that they're going to be a better team and they might not be. And that's one reason why during this time they need, as many of these guys to step up and especially, you know, the offense did a great job in that inning and showed how dangerous the offense can be in. What did you say? A 13 minute span, right? Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> at the same time, it's kind of useless when you can't continue to tack on, especially when we've seen them do this a couple of times a season where they, they put up some big runs and then just went completely, you know, uh, dry at the plate from that point on. So uh, I'm not putting my money on, you know, uh, on when these guys are going to come back. And that's the thing that's kind of, yeah, you know, a little scary as to 
to how long are they going to be? Even even Jordan Montgomery, like you said, really just has to be added to the roster by the 19th. But that doesn't mean that that's necessarily when he's going to start. So who knows if we get him on that I, date? I think, yeah, I think he'll hopefully, start. Hopefully that's the case. Honor, because, honor around that date, yeah. And, and, and if it does, then that's kind of the beginning, which isn't that far away, right? That's one week away from the Diamondbacks starting to see some relief, starting to see some reinforcements come and help this depleted roster get back to where we think this team can be. In the meantime, though, they got to hold it down, right? This is this is like the walking dead when they're trapped in one of those houses and getting just it, zombies all around them. The horde is here. <laughs> they just got to just got to survive for like a week. They'll be fine. But of course, one place I am putting my money, Jesse, is on the Arizona lottery. There's a lot of money out there right now. Uh things are crazy with some of these jackpots, but they are also Arizona Lottery, as you know, as we've talked about, is trying to make things more fun, especially here in the state of Arizona. They're trying to get you out on some Arizona adventures. They have some iconic landscapes on some of their Arizona adventure tickets. They also have ability to check in at geolocated adventures at 10 destinations across the state from Flagstaff to Yuma. You can visit azadventure.com for details and directions on where those locations are. Of course, you can also enter tickets online for a chance to win up to $1 million in cash and travel prizes. So go do that now. Of course, uh, you don't have to buy a sick rev for in order to go on these adventures, but it's highly encouraged. Uh, and Arizona lottery says proceeds from ticket sales, support environmental conservation, among other important initiatives across the state. So, uh, Arizona lottery, not just about playing games and winning prizes. It's also about giving back to the state and its communities. Visit azadventure.com for more information on how you can take an adventure for a chance to win $1 million in cash and Arizona travel prizes. Uh, and of course, lastly, wherever you're going, if you're leaving the ballpark, if you're heading home, make sure to stop by Circle K, fill yourself up, fill up your car. Uh, of course, Join the Inner Circle program if you haven't done so right now for free by downloading the Circle K app today. Terms and conditions apply at participating locations. Visit CircleK.com for details. Once you do, you'll get yourself all sorts of freebies, including free drinks, free pizza, free coffee, all sorts of stuff. You also save 25 cents off per gallon on your first five Phillips and then three cents off per gallon every day after that. So, of course, check out our friends at Circle K. And don't miss, don't miss maybe Jesse Friedman coming to a gas pump near you my soul still trapped in a gas pump in a circle k <laughs> in the downtown phoenix area but now coming soon you might also see jesse as well so uh make sure to keep your eyes peeled for that of course if you can't get enough jesse you can follow him on twitter he is at jesse and friedman i am at cap underscore caveman with a k damon dog our producer who is still just shook by that video of tory he is at damon dog that's d-a-w-g we are damon's dogs bark 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 our show is at PHNX underscore d but of course, all roads lead to at PHNX underscore sports on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We thank you guys so much for your time. We appreciate you stopping by. We'll see you Monday at 1 p.m. Uh, make sure to check out Jesse's new show, On the Record with Katie Wu. That's right now available on wherever you get your podcasts or right now on YouTube. Uh, he is in the process of replacing me. Again, no, another <laughs> inevitability. It's only, that we all it's knew only a... It was only a matter of time, Derek. I do have to address one thing real quick oh, uh, before do. before we go, which is just that I don't think I've ever had this many comments about my hair uh, in the chat that that happened uh, or early on, just as I uh, just yeah. as I popped on. Roger Bessions wants you to take care of it with some with some product. I, I believe I do so have to have acknowledge to... there's a certain there's a certain fuzziness going on right now yeah. that I'm not really on board with. Yeah. I got a haircut yesterday. And mm -hmm. uh, apparently I just didn't, I just didn't put nearly enough product in there. Ryan thinks so, you look like um, one of the Rhodes brothers. So finish your story or complete your tale. It's, or it's however a pretty that damn good comparison. It, it is, is a good one. It is a good one. <laughs> of course, the comparison goes way over my head. But it I'm does, Daddy. It's not, a, it's not a flattering one. Probably. Just, you don't know wrestling? Uh, it's a great one, Daddy. Shocking, I know. All right. <laughs> uh, yes, we will, uh, we will rectify that uh, for, for our next show. So. Um, your, your, your voices have been heard. Your voice has been heard. See, you make it a difference. Solid. You come here, you show up in the chat. You can make a difference in Jesse's Good life. Good volume. I don't, I don't yeah. think anyone's, I mean, no one's cooking you. No, no one's I mean, you. it was actually it's a pretty a haircut. It's just, yeah, it's just like, I guess it's just too dry. Yeah. It's just like a giant fuzz ball right now. But anyway, that's, that's enough of that. Jesse, can, you know, uh, home now. Nate, Nate says fluff, <laughs> fluffy Jesse. And I kind of like that. Yeah. Fluffy. Yeah. Maybe that's the, maybe that's the word. Yeah. Katie Wu came into one of my classes while I was in master's school at Cronkite and spoke to us in person. Really? Um, yeah. Really? That's cool. I'm yeah. A big fan yeah. Bill Hill's class. She's a, she's, she was awesome. Let's go check yeah, out that she, interview. 
Yeah, she was, look, she go, was fantastic. Go very, very nice of her to do that. And also, she she actually isn't here in Arizona. I think she's taking this series off. Uh, so so that makes me appreciate uh, her her willingness to do that all the more. <laughs> even more, even more. You're you're bugging her on her on her off time, Jesse. I Good know. Job. I feel terrible, but yeah. Well, oh well. <laughs> that's, that's every, everybody knows that you're the the terrible person on this show, right? It's not me. It's not David. So it's got to be one of us. Uh, that's all we got. Thank you guys for stopping by. We appreciate it. We will be back, like I said, on Monday at 1 p.m. Make sure to check out all this goodness on YouTube. Uh, Jesse will be out there at Chase Field. Get your Alec Thomas shirt tomorrow night. Don't miss that opportunity. And, of course, we appreciate your time. And remember, kids, baseball is fun, but it's so much more fun when your team can do something positive in innings 7 through 9, for Christ's sake. <laughs> 